Hey guys, the name is Chris Barocci. Welcome to Gear Corner. This video is about my self-built T-style custom guitar, the Troublecaster. A little background, like around two years ago, I played quite a few Feathertron pickup and Bixby tram loaded guitars, really good guitars like Gratches and Fender Custom Shops and this and that. And uh, I fell in love with this combination and I really felt like I need a guitar like that. Unfortunately, I didn't have the budget to buy a Fender Custom Shop, Tally, for example, with uh, the Feathertrons and our Bixby and everything. Same thing with Japanese and US Gratch guitars, didn't have the money. So I started building myself this guitar. If you like my videos, please subscribe to the channel and check out the description box for timestamps, um, additional infos and gear links and everything. The basics of this guitar. Well, it is a parts caster, but the parts like the neck and the body were heavily modified to make them fit together and, and to react and feel the way I wanted them to feel. Let's start with the neck. It's a maple neck with a rosewood board and uh, it was around like in the workshop at Toman and I used this neck originally to practice fret work like fret jobs and uh, yeah I just started modifying it already and fell in love with it so I sort of purchased it to build a guitar out of it and the headstock was different the neck shape was totally different the uh, even the nut width and the whole neck width was different and the radius of the fretboard was different and of course it had different frets so um, I changed everything on it <laughs> everything you can think of and then I needed a body so uh, I ordered one of these Harley Benton T-type guitar kits <laughs> So this is a Harley Benton T-Type guitar kit Maranti body. Let's move on to the paint job, the finish, which took me literally months. It was such a huge project because I got inspired by a guitar built by Joe Doe. Um, it's a British guitar maker. They had this guitar called the Dragster and that guitar had a similar paint job only the colors were different and many details were obviously different didn't have a big speed and none of that and different pickups too it's just this this sort of racing stripe kind of uh, white painted binding that was the same check out Joe Doe does awesome guitars and um, I took the paint job idea and uh, translated it to what I wanted to do anyhow first of all I had to customize the body quite a bit before I started finishing it uh, the bridge holes were on the wrong place because this Harley Benton bridge that comes with the kit has a different size and uh, the, 
the holes are in a different place. So I had to fill those and drill new ones. Then because I wanted to put in filter trans, I had to take care of the routings for the pickup. <laughs> And then I put a primer white, a layer of primer white nitro on the body, and then I started masking it. I bought this uh, 3M really bendable, <laughs> is that a word? Um, masking tape that follows curves, like really small radius curves even. And, um, and I used that to achieve such a perfect line following the body. And even here in the, under the Bixby, which you unfortunately cannot really see because there's the Bixby covering it up. First of all, I masked with this uh, special masking tape, everything that's white right now, and uh, painted the body seafoam green, which means the back of the body, the sides, and obviously these two parts, the two wings. And then I removed the masking tape and inverse masked the body. <laughs> If you know what I mean, I put the masking tape on this finished seafoam green edge everywhere and uh, painted the white part Olympic white. Now, why did I do that? It would be a logical question. Well, because I didn't want to have different heights, like different thicknesses of finish, like seafoam green uh, sort of being higher than the uh, Olympic white edges. I wanted them to be flush. I removed all of the masking tape and uh, finished the whole body and the headstock and everything with clear coat and then put on a last layer of sort of a tinted clear coat. Let's check out the hardware, especially on the body. First of all, the Bixby. This is a Bixby licensed trim, which means that it's a little more affordable than the original made in US Bixby. So um, I tried this and I'm totally happy with it. By the way, it's really stable and everything. And um, I had to figure out where it goes because the body didn't have the holes for a Bixby. So I had to measure that and also the uh, bridge plate. That was that was interesting. Because I wanted to have the proper ashtray bridge, the tally bridge, I had to search for quite a long time uh, to find one with the routing for a filtertron. Because most of these bridges will come like cut off here and then there's nothing around the pickup or they will not have the ashtray around which is again something I really didn't want because my pinky sort of got used to this ashtray being right here under the pickup and uh, that's like essential for me to have that tally vibe. And then because I also had the Bixby going on, I had to figure out how to make space here for the strings because the strings obviously touched the uh, edge of the ashtray on the back. And then the next huge project was finding proper brass saddles that will work because I wanted them to be compensated because it's something I have on my tally as well. And I love it. They look very vintage and they sound very vintage. The strings started to move around on top of the saddles. Obviously these were like, you know, round barrel type saddles. They're not meant to be played with, uh, with a tremolo. I made little tunnels for the strings on top where they should sit with the right fitting gauge um, nut file. And that was the ultimate solution. It was such a satisfying moment to figure out that it works, that it's really stable, that I can actually use the Bixby and that the strings do not fall off the barrel saddle. The electronics, these are proper USA Gretsch Feldertron pickups. Then I am using 500K high quality um, pots and uh, a nice three-way 
and uh, even the capacitor is like a proper paper oil uh, 0.022 microfarad um, capacitor which fits perfectly to 500k pods and uh, humbuckers anyhow and I also have a subtle treble bleed in the guitar because I felt like even though I use the 50s wiring um, for some reason these uh, Gretsch pickups just lost their clarity as soon as I turned the volume down. Then the pick guard. I had to customize the pick guard as well. This was a snow white, like the most boring white pick guard. I put on a layer of tinted clear coat and with that it sort of became a little more yellow on parts and fits way better to the rest of the guitar. Okay, the neck. As told, it's maple with a rosewood board. I uh, removed the frets, the nut and everything and made the whole neck narrower because um, I just love that vintage telly vibe. I love the neck on my telly and it just felt more modern and sort of wider and it didn't fit so well. Uh, yeah, I had to remove everything in order to do that, obviously. I changed the neck profile too. It almost feels like a very subtle V at the first fret. It's still a C, but it's it has a, a nice edge here in the middle and, uh, and it's a really flat, nice and round C at the top. The snack had a pretty flat radius on the fretboard. It was like 12 or 14 maybe, I can't remember. But um, since I removed the frets, I it was easy to change the radius. So um, I did that and now it's like a nine and a half. That's a bone nut. These are Goldo nickel frets, like medium jumbo-ish, kind of 6105 kind of fret wire. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, you can check it out for yourself. Last but not least, the headstock. Um, I put my logo on it, which is fun. And uh, these are Clusen Deluxe uh, machine heads. But the headstock was pre-drilled for modern machine heads, which means that it had like a 10 millimeter um, diameter hole per tuner. And uh, these ones will need like eight and a half millimeter. Um, so I had to solve the problem. Uh, so I filled all the six holes and re-drilled them. What do I love and hate about the guitar? Well, I don't hate anything. <laughs> Let's start with that. And um, there are a few things that I don't love that much. And those few things are just two things and those are the two pickups, <laughs> to be honest. I love the Bixby. I love how the, uh, the pots work. I love the weight. I love the acoustic sound of the guitar. which does matter if you play without amps as well, which is something I do like late at night, if I just want to play a few minutes or uh, just you know want to grab a guitar and play something, I don't plug it in on amp all the time. So I do pay attention to my guitar's acoustic sound as well. I love the neck shape. I love how it feels. I love everything about it, except for the pickups. <laughs> I sort of struggle a little bit because um, they have less output, which is totally cool. I have nothing against that, but they also sound a little sort of um, lazy or <laughs> not. There's there's no proper initial attack, like what I'm used to with single coils or even the humbuckers I choose for my guitars have that. They have this 
punchy, poppy first initial attack uh, when I hit the strings or pluck the strings. And uh, these do not really have that. So I always have to trick with my pedals or my amp to make it work the way I want it. And then I really enjoy the sound character of these pickups. So that's why I'm a little back and forth and haven't decided yet. But I think I, think I could imagine like a mini humbucker here, maybe even a Firebird pickup and uh, a Tele pickup, a normal Tele bridge single coil, or maybe something like a chopper, which is the double blade sort of single coil format humbucker, something like that. I'm not sure, but you guys could tell me if you have any ideas, any, I don't know, suggestions. I would love to hear uh, those because I am totally open. I haven't decided on anything yet, but I do know that I want to experiment with the pickups and that will require some work because I'll need another pick guard and definitely a different bridge plate. Uh, you guys take it easy. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you guys like this guitar as much as I do. And if you have any questions about it, if I forgot anything, just let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, see you next week. Bye-bye.